Hi guys and girls. First of all, thank you so much for your warm response for the previous video. Okay, uh, in this video we'll be learning about classes and objects. But uh, as I told you, we'll be right from the word go, we'll be trying to look into the CFD and CAE applications as far as Python is concerned. So what we're going to do is, we're going to make graphs and through that we're going to be learning how classes and objects we can use them to our own advantage. I hope I'm making myself clear and if not then you just continue watching the video and you get to know what I mean. And before I do any of this stuff, let me just rule my So guys, uh, in order to write the first script which is going to be about graphs, we need to cover four things. The first one is class, second is object, then self and in it. So once we have covered these four topics, we are good to go for our first script. Right guys, what do you see on your screen? You see a sentence that says, let's meet sing at 4 p.m. but by standing half a meter apart because of Corona. Now over here you see that we have made a sentence by combining 4 which is int type and then we have pure English as well and then we have half as well which is a fraction. So fraction that's going to result into a float data type. So you see that's how we are relaying information between us as well by choosing different data types which are given to us by combining those data types then we come up with something some mixed kind of instruction and that's how we relay information between ourselves guys all that is okay but i'm not really convinced so let's even break it down further so human language how many basic data types do we have we have alphabets we have whole numbers 0 1 2 3 and then we have fraction numbers which are basically a type of float number you can say right so we combine all these three in some combination and then we come up with words and we come up with phrases and we come up with sentences they are nothing but classes right but then you'll say okay if they are classes where are the objects well objects are when you say hi hello bye eat that's the object of the class words and when you talk about silly corona one virus three months lockdown that's phrase right so it's an object of the class phrases now you see the object when you have created the object you're saying one virus one virus that's combination of your whole number and your alphabet so that's the kind of freedom which you get when you when you can combine right the basic big data types in order to form classes so that when you create objects out of the classes then you have full control over it so you express better but when we talk about the programming languages um, python for example then clubbing different data types in the programming language it gives us freedom to manage our code better you'll understand what i'm trying to say once we start scripting but as of now you just need to understand that yeah we have in english like in our normal language whatever language you speak we have our basic data types right and then in the programming language for example in python specifically we have our basic data types in python as well so now we have int float string list and tuple and boolean don't worry about list tuple and boolean at the moment but so if somebody was to ask you uh, why do you even need class well the answer is that we need class because one type of data is given by the basic data types int can hold int type of data int won't be able to hold string type of data right same way how you can't really tell your name in numbers you have to use strings right to tell your name so in the same sense you have your basic data types most of the times in programming language when you're coding you have to make your own entities because those entities can only be described by some combination of the basic data types so what you do is you combine those basic data types into a bunch and you call that bunch some class okay and then you try and derive your objects through it that's basically what class is but now it will get more clear once we start coding so let's all right guys uh, the concept of the classes and objects theoretically that has been covered so i hope you have an idea now what classes entail uh, now just to prove my point what i said basically we have default data types given by python right just to prove that point, we have a variable a, which is storing value of 5, and then b, value string, right? And then c, decimal place value, and then d, we have your list, e is holding your tuple, and f is holding a boolean character. Now, 
you might not understand what list or two pillar boolean is at the moment but that's okay no problem at all but you just need to remember that those are there as far well when we talk about the basic data types of in python so they are there so let's just quickly run but run what basically what we are trying to do here is we are trying to print the type of a so when i say basic data types so we have int spring and uh, float as well so in order to find the type of any variable what we do is we use this function called type so that's exactly what i'm trying to do so type a and then i would want that to be printed in my console so which is why i'm typing print okay let's go ahead and see what we get okay so now for a let me move it move it up a bit or oh, not at this time so we have a equals to 5 and we were storing those values and then when we printed the type of each of those variables we are getting a as int type b as string type c as float type and so on so now you see these are different data types okay and if you were to find out what is the data type of first element of d then that's storing your int right so you're combining the basic data types in order to form a new data type which is called list and the e is your tuple f is your boolean right in the same way python allows us to make our own data types and where, how do we make it we make it by the keyword known as class now that we know that we are allowed to create our own data types let's just do it we do it by saying class keyword and then the name of the data type right so we had the name int that was storing integer value so you name yours i'm just going to name my menu now what should go inside the menu well that depends upon what do you want your object to have for example let's go down okay one moment it's come out of the class i'm going to create one object desync okay Well, actually, the convention says that you have to put lowercase letter for your objects. So just bear in mind. I don't really. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we are gonna create an object of the class menu, right? So class menu, and then whenever you're creating object, you have to put parentheses as well. If you don't understand why, no problem. I'll tell you in the next one. next lecture because this is very important very vital you also create one more uh, probably k underscore or object okay and that object will be again coming from your menu class so we would want our pcing and k core to have access to the menu given to them right and the menu would have various dishes on it so i'm going to say i'm going to make a variable of indian dish and that's going to store my string value of butter chicken yeah now indian dish is storing butter chicken while there is also a chinese dish that's storing a value int value 46 then you have thai as well okay thai is storing a float value random float value now i know dish is won't be storing random float values or integer values but this is just for explaining purposes okay so we have made three different attributes inside of a class menu and they are having different data types so we are clubbing these three different data types inside of a one newly created data type because python allows us to do newly created data type so which is why we are having three of them now guys remember i told you i'm creating class called menu but i also told you that i'm creating a new data type called menu if it is a new data type now supposing that we are holding integer 5 and a can we hold in variable of a new data type menu can we do that just pause the video for a moment think over it well the answer is that's exactly what we do when we create objects well so you name your variable right a equals to 5 so you have given your name to the variable which happens to be an object because you are driving it from your own data type right so when you have variable from your own data type your user defined data type that's what we call object right but now the normal data type that can only hold one type of value but over here you can have three different types of 
values right that's what you access using the dot separator so now you have such freedom such power you can say that you can access three different data types with your variable whereas if you were using just default data type you just had one well that's the answer now when we create an object out of the class right so we expect that object should be able to have access to these three attributes so just to check if that's true what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say desync now dot separator is used to access the attributes of the class also the methods but we haven't covered methods yet so don't worry we'll cover it in the next lecture so you say desync dot indian indian right and then you put it inside the parenthesis and then you prefix print statement okay so now we are trying to print what does desync have access to inside the variable indian okay what do we have inside the variable indian so we expect butter chicken to be printed out on our screen sorry excuse me for my slow computer so you see butter chicken is there now you can have access to each and every attribute through your object right attribute of your class so well that's basically what class is so you make the class according to what you need inside your object right i'll just give you a little teaser for example when we will be creating our script for the plots so we want our plot to have x axis we want our plot to have y axis and then we would want our plot to have legends title so all these things they are going to be in the object right so object should be have a when whenever you create a plot so that's going to be your object of the class plot so that object will be having all these four attributes so which is why you would want them to be inside the class now i want to i'm itching to tell you about self and init function but i won't do it in this video because it's getting longer anyway variables we can also have functions inside our classes and when you have function inside the class that's called method when it's outside the class that's this function right so there's not much difference i'll tell you in the next one you now you know why class is needed now you know how it is created now you know why object is created and what are the attributes how do we populate our class so i think there's nothing much more to say unless we get introduced to the inner itself so we will be doing that in the next video stay tuned i'll see you